Congratulations, your students have started playing Dreamscape. But what exactly are they doing? If it doesn't seem to make sense to you, this video will help you navigate that. Here, you see an example of a Dreamscape Dwell, which is the main base your students play off of. If your student is playing Dreamscape for the first time, they will see a game tutorial that walks them through how to build their Dwell and go on challenges. If they continue to need help with gameplay after the tutorial, they can refer to this checklist here, which will give them hints of what next steps to take. The main objective of this game is for students to build up their dwell with the goal of protecting their vision core, this item here, where all their dreams are stored. They can challenge other dreamscape players to capture their vision cores, and everything requires them to read and answer comprehension questions. On the top left hand corner, you will find your student's username. Right next to it, you will see a crystal type item with a number attached to it. These are the number of shards that student has. Shards are the most important resource that your students are trying to obtain. The number of shards they attain determine where they end up on the global and class leaderboards. Right below that, you see another number with an hourglass image. This shows the number of questions answered by the students so far. Questions are represented by the hourglass because answering questions correctly moves time. What exactly does this mean? In other non-educational defense or battle games, players try to build up a fort or an army to achieve their objectives. Building up these items take time, so if you were to select a couple of items to build or upgrade today, leave the game and come back tomorrow, time would have literally passed and you would have come back to an updated base. In Dreamscape, however, time only passes if questions are answered correctly. If a player clicks on an item to upgrade today, leaves the game and comes back tomorrow without answering any questions, there will be no change to their dwell when they log back in. This also goes for adding new buildings, training the reveries who are basically the army, and also going on challenges. Let's try some of the actions here to see what happens. Let's say I try to upgrade this snake route. I do have enough resources to do so. It says here that I need one hourglass in order to upgrade it to level 3. So that means I need to answer one question correctly. Just a note, if I try to upgrade this mirage tree instead, uh, which is up to level 10, this requires 48 hourglasses. The higher in level students reach for individual buildings, the more hourglasses they need to upgrade. So let me try upgrading this now. Ah, I can't do it even though I have enough resources, because all my dream weavers, who are basically my builders, they're already busy. I have five dream weavers. Students usually start with one. I built my way up to this. But all five of them are currently in the process of upgrading other buildings. That's all right. Let me try training some of my reveries instead. I'm just going to select a couple here. Okay, so it seems that I do need to answer one question correctly in order to train them as well. Okay, you know what? I have enough reveries running around here, so why don't I just go on a challenge? I can go for a challenge here, or I can also just go to the menu and select my friends list if I want to challenge a specific friend or a classmate. Now, Easy will match me with someone um, who has built their dwell up to the, about the same amount that I have. Uh, medium will match me with someone on a slightly higher level and so on and so forth for hard and nightmare. I have enough resources, so let me try to find a match. This will find me uh, a match with any player on Dreamscape. Let's go. Oh. It seems I need to answer one more question correctly in order to earn a challenge. Challenges are earned for every five questions answered correctly. And as you can see here, I have actually reached four questions. These are the green bars here. Uh, so I need to answer one more. At any one time, students can save up to five challenges here. 
So it looks like answering a question right now is the only way I can move forward. So let me do that. All right. Okay. Which human trait is used in this sentence? I believe the answer is screamed. So I'm going to select that. Okay, I'm correct. Now, getting an answer correct has really moved things along for me. I now have more resources. I have more reveries added here. Uh, I've, I've uh, completed five questions to earn a challenge, and all my buildings have gone down by uh, one hourglass each. Uh, over here, you also see a streak feature. This is an important feature we added to ensure that students try to answer the questions they see as accurately as possible. Five questions answered correctly in a row earns a student a reward. Ten in a row earns them an even sweeter one, and so on and so forth for every multiple of five following that. Students can track where in the multiple of five they are um, over here. So I basically need two more un uh, questions answered correctly to hit my five and earn a reward. Okay, so what happens if I answer a question incorrectly? Let's try it. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to select uh, an incorrect answer on purpose. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I got it wrong, and I can click see answer to see what the answer should have been. All right, and what else happened? Nothing else happened. Answering questions wrongly do nothing more. Now, I've been talking a lot about challenges, but what are they? The challenges are the main way that students can earn shards and get ahead in the leaderboard. Um, let me go on the challenge right now so that you can see what I mean. So this action transports me to another player's dwell where I can now uh, release some of my reveries here to try and capture um capture this player's vision core so let me just put a couple more here all right so my main objective is to capture their vision core so that's what uh, i've sent my reveries in to do okay i've actually captured it so now i'm going to end the battle here and you can see that I have won because I captured their vision call. I earned two shards here. I'm going to collect my reward. I also earned a sweet reward for going on a challenge. I got a white core, so that's cool. Now I'm going to return home. So I think you get the idea of what the challenge is about. There are three things to note about the challenges. Number one, when a challenge is about to begin, a player leaves their own dwell and goes to another player's dwell. At the end of the challenge, a player returns to their own dwell, as you have seen yourself here. This is the level of interaction that happens between two players in Dreamscape. There are no other forms of communication or interaction between any two players. During a challenge, it looks to the challenger like they're destroying the dwell of the person they challenge. You saw that before as well. And this is the part of the game that makes it so fun for students. However, in reality, the buildings of the challenge player do not actually get destroyed. Let's take a look at my defense log over here. While I was gone, I did get challenged. Um, but if you see, my dwell looks fine. What happens uh, when you win or lose a challenge is either you, you increase or decrease the number of shards you have. So I won some here and I lost some here. And this will just move you up or down in the leaderboard. The third feature uh, that I want to highlight about challenges is a feature called the shield. Whenever your dwell gets challenged, depending on the amount of shards you lost, so there's a shield up here, um, your shield will go up for between two to six hours. So this means that if any player challenges you while your shield is up or while your shield is activated, um, you will not lose any further shards. This is to ensure that no one player gets challenged too many times in a row 
and lose too many shards that way. Just a note, going on a challenge yourself while your shield is up will deactivate your shield. Also, if you have been challenged three times um, since you last logged in, your shield will automatically go up and stay up until you log in again. Again, this is to ensure that any student who has been away from Dreamscape for a while, for example, during the summer holidays, does not come back to an account with very little shards left. These features have been implemented on purpose to ensure that there isn't too much unhappiness during play, while continuing to make the game fun and competitive enough for your students to stay motiv motivated to play. To learn more about what information you can glean off of your educator dashboard to help you observe skills and inform instruction, please watch the next video.